Yo, yo, what's going on? Welcome inside the TCO Studios. Gabe Henderson here alongside Ben Lieber, Brian O'Neill, Garrett Bradbury. Got two guys on the show today, and I'm so excited about this show because we always start this thing off with a trivia question, and I know Minnesota is more of a Big Ten state. But you guys both played in the ACC, similar. And it's always good to talk to some guys, just being from the East Coast, about some ACC talk. So, first question is for Brian about Garrett. Hmm. What college award did Garrett win his senior year at NC State? The Remington for the nation's best center. That was so quick. Yeah, Just, that was really quick. So it's, it's like know your teammates. I mean, it's like it's like Garrett probably talks about it every day. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of living in the past. <laughs> yeah, but so coming out of high school, you were a tight end, went to NC State, went to college, moved to center, what, your sophomore year? Yeah. And then that process of saying, okay, this is what I want to do, and then actually figuring out that, oh, I'm actually pretty good at, pretty good at this. What was that like? Yeah, I don't know if it was what I wanted to do at the time, okay. but that's what coach wanted me to do, so that's what I did. Uh, it ended up being obviously a great decision, but um, I thought I was a tight end. Clearly, I was not a tight end. You still have the hands? <laughs> I still have the hands, but it's just like getting there on the route. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what Coach saw I didn't have. So Yeah, getting the separation and yeah. like, yeah, getting open. It's kind yeah. of a big thing for Part of it. It's yeah, part, part of it. it. All right. I mean, I, he played tight end too, so I don't want to say who has the better hands now, but. I don't know who's got better hands. I can still break somebody off, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he can get open, okay. but maybe he can't catch it. Garrett can't get open, but he can catch it. Okay. Put us together. Yeah, put us together. But you might have a tight end. You might have a tight end. <laughs> All right, do I got, am I, am I ready to go second. now? All right, all right, Garrett. This is for you. What award did Brian win in 2016 after a sophomore year at Pitt? Brian won an award that isn't really an award. <laughs> it was for doing something that, um, he won the Piesman. Wow. Brian won the Piesman <laughs> Award We're good. for all the touchdowns he scored as an O lineman. Which was how many? Two. Should have had three, but <laughs> he got hawked by a D tackle, actually caught him from behind and really? tackled him. Yeah, would have had three. Explain that, please, Brian. <laughs> I had two in 2016, and that's when I won the award. And then the next year, we tried to run the same play that I scored on the previous year. And I got caught from behind by a D tackle at the half yard line. <laughs> they reviewed the play and called it no longer a touchdown. Against us, right? Yep. Yeah, it was. It was against Plus, Garrett's team. You, wow. just you just couldn't stretch out far enough. I guess. And before he brings it up, NC State beat us. <laughs> and they ran for over 200 yards, and they're really good. See, he won the Remington, so yeah. they're really good. Naheem Hines <laughs> was the running back that year, right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Place for the. He had a punt return for a touchdown, too, that game. Oh. Jeez, you guys got the brake speed off of you, huh? It's all good. I mean, Hail to Pitt. he did say we live in the present, and Pitt is the ACC champions this year, so I'm sure you're proud about that. Pitt is the ACC champ. Pitt, it was the ACC champions this year. Pitt also runs the Coastal Division. They've won two of the last three years. Hmm. Uh, the two Coastal. of the last three? Yeah. Two out of the last four. Okay. Um, actually, Pitt joined the ACC in 2013. Okay. NC State's been in the ACC since 1976, somewhere around there. And Pitt has an ACC you know title that? before NC State. How do you know this? We've gone on this argument like probably <laughs> 10 times at least. All right. So the Peisman Trophy is the award given to linemen who does the most alignment things mm. like running or throwing the ball. So, Garrett, knowing that he is your teammate, what is the most alignman thing that Brian O'Neill still does today? Ooh. I, you know, what first comes to mind? Mm hmm we go up to the cafeteria and eat, have breakfast, lunch, sometimes dinner there. And Brian, he's just, he's so into his diet. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, he has to ask the chefs, is this non-GMO? You know, is this organic? Does this have any gluten in it? <laughs> and if any of those, if, if a box isn't checked with any of those, he can't have it. He can't put that in his body. Because it's just, his body is such a temple. It's, he's so dialed. That, that's not really Lyman like, you know. No, you usually just grub out on food. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Counting the calories on the nutrition facts. Um, so I'd probably say that. Because you just think about it. You just say, like, okay, somebody who counts, like, GMOs, usually, yeah. like, a receiver right, or right. DB. But 
That's not lineman. No. no, most linemen are just you picture them just going right to the trough, seafood eat food just, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. yeah, just getting after it. Which I'm sure you enjoyed when they said, "Hey, tight end, you're going to move to center." And you're yeah. like, "What do I get to do? Well, I got to gain weight. Just cool. put on weight. Yeah, not a lot of jobs Easy. To I tell you to put on weight. <laughs> so, it's being able to play with that weight, right? Still, it's, it's still a balance to that, but. I don't know, like college, it was like, all right, we just got to gain weight to move from. Yeah. But both of you guys came in as a tight end. Then you had to put on weight. It's like, all right, you guys got to put on weight to, to be an offensive lineman and be effective at it. But that balance of putting on that weight and then now trying to keep it off and still trying to be effective, talk about that process. I mean, it's not just whole milk and creatine anymore. You got to mm -hmm. be able to do it 17, 18, 19 weeks in a row every day. Um, so... You know, obviously try to improve as the years go on in nutrition, but in college it was whatever you could get your hands on, as much <laughs> as you can get, and just go to work. But now it's a little bit more dialed in. There's a lot more people here to help us. So do you actually count calories? No. Okay. He, was, he exaggerated quite <laughs> yeah. a bit. Well, I was, just curious, I was yeah, curious yeah. because I, obviously you guys would eat more than us. Yeah. I didn't know if you knew like about how many calories you guys both actually consumed during the season. Because it... Because you probably do lose weight during the course of the season. It's, it's probably a little bit of work to keep your weight up. Yeah, especially like during training camp. There's days we'll measure in our weight before practice and after practice. And a lot of days we'll both, and all the linemen will lose more than 10 pounds in a practice. Um, but in the off season, I've counted before, and it's somewhere between 5,500 and 6,000 a day. Yeah, that's not bad. Not terrible. So when it comes to like playing weight, how long did it take you to understand, okay, this is what my playing weight should be in the NFL? Because... You've put on weight each year, but understanding, okay, this is what I'm best at. How, how did you figure that out? You know, it's talking to the older guys in the room. Um, some guys are like really dialed on it, like Brian, and there's some guys that don't really care at all. And you kind of find somewhere in between and, and just know what works for you. Like Brian said, it's season's a grind. It's, you know, it's 20 weeks. It's your preseason and 17 regular season games, playoffs. Um, and so what you put in your body is, is really how you're going to feel. So you got to feel your best on Sundays. And uh, it's just, it's a constant process of, the I mean, the biggest thing is just, we can't miss meals, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, if I feel like if we miss a meal in the off season or in season, you feel like you're going to lose five pounds. And so it's just that constant um, thought and pressure of, you know, I got to get something in. If we're on a golf course, like we got to get, we got to get food in the off season or it's just, it's, it's an everyday thing. You know, you can't really take a day off with, with your diet. So should we flip that question around? Yeah. So, so Brian, to you, what is the most unlineman like thing <laughs> that Garrett does? Does he like crochet or something? Mm. I guess you have to think about what the stereotypical O lineman is, right? Man. <clears throat> or does he kind of check all those boxes? I feel like he checks most of the boxes. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we both catch a lot of fire because everybody brings in donuts on Saturday morning in the <laughs> offensive line room. And everybody hates it, but like I won't eat a whole donut, and neither will he. So we split a donut, so we each eat half a donut. <laughs> we get and like everybody else is like, "Don't do it! Don't do it!" And we do it every time. But like, I'd say probably something like that. That is kind of he soft. makes fun of me. He's very health conscious too. Don't don't get it twisted. <laughs> so let's go inside the offensive line room a little bit. Who's who is the funniest guy <laughs> in the room? Either Rashad or Blake, in my opinion. Rashad but, Hill. Rashad. It, there's just there's so many awesome personalities in our room um, and so many easy stereotypes. You know, Ezra Cleveland is hilarious in his own way. Um, I don't think we got two words out of him for the first 10 games last year. Mm. And then all of a sudden he just came out of his shell and now he's one of the funniest. Um, we have some awesome nicknames. Blake, we call Beaver. Like we literally only call him Beaver. <laughs> just like, so, some rookies State. don't yeah. know his name is Blake. Wow. Kyle Hinton, we literally call him Tuba because <laughs> he won. He was All-State as a seventh grader in the band for a tuba, tuba player. Wow. Yeah. And some people don't know his name is Kyle. He said he would guess that over half the team doesn't know his name is Kyle. Everyone just calls him Tuba. So uh, do we have a great room. We have. So then what nicknames do they have for you guys? We don't really have one. We don't have B.O. B.O. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you smell that? It's a whole lot of B.O. No, but we have, we have a good room. Awesome coaches, and it's, it's, been, it's been awesome to work with them this year. Uh, before we go to break, I, I know th each year the rookies have to decorate the, the offensive lineman room for, I by guess, choice, whatever. By choice. They don't have to. Yeah. By choice? Yeah, it's, it's all by choice. So did Darisaw choose to decorate the, the yeah. off offensive lineman room for Christmas this year, and how did he do? Him and Wyatt, they both, they both did a good job. Um, and Halloween and for Thanksgiving. Can't forget those holidays. 
Um, but Christmas is the big one. We want them to go all out. They did a good job. But yeah. They, Brian, Brian wasn't as pleased. You know, we've given them, we gave them examples of the past. Um, past ones were better. I'll say that. But uh, the efforts there. Hmm. I gave him like a C, C minus. Like, Which you passed. You're still passing. Yeah. You're moving on to the next grade. But like, are you coming home? Like, hey, I got a C minus. Like, let's go. You're not getting a donut at Krispy Kreme. Not getting a donut. But, like, it was good, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah. But they still have Christmas Day to make up for it. Mm. We have some stockings in our room, so if they fill those with, with good presents, that could get bumped up. See, I feel your disappointment because I would think that if you showed them the examples from the past, you'd think that com competitive spirit would be like, hey, we actually, we're going yeah. to outdo the guys yeah. from the past. Brian actually did a PowerPoint presentation for the rookies on what it should look like. One of my buddies who plays for the, who's a rookie offensive lineman for the Texans decorated the Texans offensive line room and he sent me a video of it and I said hey thanks I'm going to use this in my presentation on showing the rookies how to decorate the room he said is this going to be used as a good example or a bad example <laughs> I said this is an example of what not to do in a million years <laughs> this isn't even close to acceptable so. we have a higher standard here you know we raise the bar a little bit so are there, it infl goes back are there inflatables there's a couple inflatables. They're not yeah. as big. Last year the there was one. They're kind of like some inflatables tall. that like hit the ceiling, about 12 feet tall. But <laughs> it actually goes back to when Tony Sprano was the O-line coach here. Mm. It was his favorite thing to do for Christmas. Um, so it's something kind of the guys have been keeping going for him. And I think Coach Janoko always sends a video of it to his wife. And uh, it's just something cool that we do. I love it. Well, before we, well, when we get back from the break, we're going to talk a little ball. Y'all cool with that? All right, Garrett Bradbury, Brian O'Neill. Ben Lieber will be right back on The Audible, presented by Verizon. Let's go, bring it up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. It's about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger, come on. All of them get the dough down. That is the juggernaut. All right, we are back. This is The Audible, presented by Verizon, Garrett Bradbury, Brian O'Neill, Ben Lieber. My name is Gabe Henderson. And, uh, guys, I'm going to get right to it. Dalvin Cook, third straight 1,000-yard season. He's going to give you guys all the credit for it. So what has it been like blocking for him, making him uh, a pro bowler for the second straight year? <laughs> uh, Dalvin's the best. He's one of the best teammates I've ever had. His energy, uh, it's contagious. He just he loves football. He loves everything about it. He loves practice. You know, I mean, in running backs, that can take a toll on your body, you know, especially late in the season. You're getting 25, 30 carries, and he comes in on Mondays ready to go. On Wednesdays, ready to practice. Uh, I've got so much respect for him, and everyone knows how good he is. You know, we, we know in the old line room that we don't have to give him much. We just have to give him a little crease. He's going to find it, and once he gets that second, third level, they're not tackling Goodbye. him. So that's, that's something we take personally in the O-line room. Like, we just, we got to give him that um, because he's going to make guys miss, and it's, it's fun to watch. Isn't it three consecutive? Ones? Is it three consecutive? I think so. Wow. Yeah, three consecutive. I, I figured, I knew it was two for sure. But, yeah, yeah, it should be. So 2019, yeah, three consecutive Pro Bowls. That's crazy. That's crazy. See, B.O. knows. He, he, <laughs> he knows. He's, he's got all the stats and everything, man. That's my running back. That's Put some respect on him, bro. <laughs> Do you guys ever, I mean, how often, I'm sure you guys, it, it can be a little numbing because it happens a lot, but how often, even when you turn on the game uh, from last week and you're like, damn, like, how does he do it? Like, you might just be in awe sometimes of, of the way he runs and the way that he can find creases and make people miss right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. The best is when you block a guy or you think you're blocking a guy and you either get, you're on the ground or the play goes away or something and you just like look up at the scoreboard and you just like run down the sideline. Let's go. <laughs> you know, like it didn't really go behind you, but you see him running 40 yards, it hypes you up. It's pretty good. But a, a play that, that I'm sure you can probably say that was the Steelers game, right? Where it was a, it looked like an inside zone and Dalvin bounced it because mm -hmm. everybody washed down. Your guy washed down, you blocked him down, and you look up, Dalvin's 20 yards down the field, touchdown. Like plays like that, where it's just improvisation, it, that, that's got to make you guys happy too, right? Yeah. He makes us right, you know. He, him and Hammer back there. Hammer's the eraser, and, and they make a lot of plays together. And so it's, just, it's awesome to be a part of it. Now, Garrett, you said, uh, you know, last, last week at the press conference, you talked really openly and candidly about, you know, when you were out with COVID and you came back and you still weren't in the lineup. Like, 
how that makes you sort of self reflect. I mean, could you just kind of go through that thought process again for everybody, just like what that forces you to do when you're on the sideline? Yeah, there's a lot of time by yourself. You know, you're a lot of people are in your ear giving you different thoughts and, and their own perspective on the situation. But uh, the biggest thing for me is, you know, if it's, if it's my fault, if I can look in the mirror and, and say, I could have done this better, then I can change it. You know, I, I can put it on myself and make the correction and, and, and be where I need to be. Um, you know, there's, I got a lot of good advice. You know, there's a lot of guys in this locker room that have been in similar situations or just kind of felt um, the business of the NFL and, and it's awesome to get their perspective. Guys that are, have been in the league for 10 years, they've seen a lot of different things. And so, you know, it's, it's taking all of the information and advice you're getting and listening to what you need to listen to and then just, it's going back to work. Um, I had a coach, that coach me in college text me, he's like, you know, busting your butt and working is what got you where you are. That's all you can do from here on out. So that's just kind of the mindset I wanted to take um, and know that I was going to be back on the field. And I think there's another thing that stood out to me from what you said is you, you basically changed your mentality and your mindset of like just plain not to, you were kind of worried about screwing up and yeah. making mistakes and that, that ability to play free and yeah. be like, you know what? Who cares? As long as I go out in there and, you know, I'm giving 100 percent and I know I'm well prepared, you know, I, I can't think about the mistakes and making mistakes. I think in a, when you extrapolate that and put it towards the team, I think that's a great message for the locker room mm -hmm. as well. As like, let's guys, it's like it's crunch time. Let's not worry about mistakes. No you, doubt. Know, you got you got to play free if you're going to play fast, you know, and vice versa. You yeah. think some guys picked up on that at all? Yeah, I hope so. You know, it's it's one of those like, why not? Like, what do you have to lose? Let's just lay it all out there. Empty the tank. That's something that. You know, watching previous games from the year, you, you're playing a little timid, you're playing a little bit cautious, like you don't want to get hurt, but it's like we got to empty the tank every week. Yeah. You know, every week's a different battle. Um, and so that's something that I'm trying to, trying to take and move forward with. So moving into this L.A. Rams game, just moving forward, you played Akeem Hicks last week. This is a guy that a perennial all-pro defensive tackle. Now you go against another guy in – uh, what, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Donald. I'm trying to say Daniil Hunter. I wish he was playing. But you go against a guy in Aaron Donald. Like, does playing Akeem Hicks at all prepare you for Aaron Donald? I know techniques change, uh, things change, how they how they come at you. But size changes, size changes, <laughs> everything changes. But a little like, different body types. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he might see more of him, but different body types. But obviously, Aaron's done it for a really long time at the highest level possible. Probably will go down as one of the best football players to ever play the game. Um, so we're going to have to know where he is at all times. But uh, with the Rams, it's not just him. You got him, you got Von Miller, mm -hmm. who's a first ballot Hall of Famer on the edge, and Leonard Floyd already has 11 sacks on the year. So they present challenges up front, but so does every other team we play, and we got to go up and try to present our challenges to them, too. You know, a lot of, a lot of people. As we analyze every game, it's like, well, this offense runs this style of offense. This defense is, you know, a four-three base, three-four base. But so much is like hybrid now. And I know that you guys are playing kind of a three-four front now this week and and last week at times. But like, does that really matter to you guys when you guys are breaking down film? What their base defense is? Or we just kind of on the media side make more of a, a big deal out of it? I think you guys might make more of a big deal about it. I mean, it just changes us. X's and O's like slightly. I mean, yeah. we're still running the same concepts. They're just blocked a little bit differently based on the structure. So right. we have all the same concepts we've always ran. And ideally those concepts work against every front. Um, but at the end of the day, it's players making plays. So whether they're in odd, even, three, four, four, three, it's us against them Whether when it comes down to it. So he's the one who has to identify it for all of us. So yeah. I just do what I'm told when I'm out there. But he pro it probably means more to him than it does to me because uh, he's the one who's got to identify everything. And Go ahead. Yeah, there's a few communication changes. Um, there's a few runs we like more versus three down, four down. And I think traditionally with a three down, if they're playing like a two-gap defense, you know, they might, might not be screaming off the ball, um, getting upfield on you. So there's a few changes, but at the end of the day, it's, it's us versus them. You know, it's, the coaches have great plays, but when players make plays, so we just, like I said, Give Dalvin a little crease, give Kirk a little bit of time. We got some special players. So, Garrett, it, this is, you just made me think of a question. Like, what is your thought process when you're walking up to the line of scrimmage trying to make calls for, for our audience that, that only thinks like a quarterback, but as a center, how, how would you a, a explain that? First thing that I look at is the defensive structure, you know, is how many bigs are in the game. Uh, and then you're kind of relaying the calls of who's comboing to which linebacker 
front side, who's front side, who's back side. And then in protection, you know, what's our, what protection is it? What's our plan of attack for it? Um, and so it's just getting everyone on the same page. And whether it's the perfect call, whether we're going to the perfect guy, if we're all on the same page, we've got the players to make plays regardless. So it's just communicating and, and when you're in away games and it's, there's more of an emphasis on it, but uh, just making sure everyone's on the same page. So he's got all that going on, and then about 30% of the plays, I look at him and ask him what the snap count is, so he's got to tell me that too, right after he's got all that going on. I just go out there and say, I'm blocking him, and then half the time I forget the snap count, and I ask him. So. Well, it's, a, it's funny you bring that up, because I noticed um, a couple times in this last game, Darisaw would break the huddle, and it's almost like he, you could see his mind process, and he turned he turn and would like either ask you or Kirk, like, wait, what? And it's almost like, was he asking the snap count or just making yeah. sure? Because he was like breaking the huddle a little too early. But there's a lot of communication that happens between, you know, Kurt's got to tell everybody. And I think Darisaw just maybe didn't think yeah. about like, wait, what's the snap count? What was that again? <laughs> that happens like to a lot more people than yeah. him and a lot more than you probably think. <laughs> All right, final question, elephant in the room. We're seven and seven. We're in the playoffs if, if the playoffs, if the regular season ended today, it doesn't end today but we get a chance to play at home in front of our fans against another team that's vying for playoff position. The excitement level that you guys have right now. I mean, it's been, I mean, been that way to back us against the wall for the past couple of weeks. We got to win to have a chance at this thing. So it's no different. I mean, stakes are raised, but every game in the NFL is important. We understand what's at stake. We understand what it's going to take in order to win this game. And uh, this is the only one we can think about. We're not going to have a chance the last couple of weeks unless we get this one done. So. Um, my mindset doesn't change. You know, in order for us to win, it's going to require us to go out and play well. So might as well put our focus on to what it takes to play well and how it takes for each of us to go play our best individual game. Well, uh, Vikings fans, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. We won't talk to you before then, but we hope to see you at U.S. Bank Stadium on Sunday cheering on this Minnesota Vikings team against the L.A. Rams. Always a pleasure talking to Ben Lieber, my guy, Brian O'Neill, Garrett Bradbury. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, ben, sign us out. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Everybody be safe. And uh, we'll get a Vikings win. Skull Vikes. How was that? I loved it. It was good. Loved it. It's fine. Loved you to put, put you on the spot. spot. I know. <laughs>